What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Bird's Eye View. I'm your host, Erica McCall, because I, I didn't say that right, y'all. I messed up my intro. Oh my gosh. Guys, I messed up my intro. I didn't say bird. This is my first time I ever messed up the intro, but you know what? I'm not restarting this. We roll the punches here at Bird's Eye View. And they call me Bird because my last name is McCall. And I have someone here today who was here when this nickname was created. So I'm so freaking high. I've never been more excited for an episode, y'all. I know I say this every freaking time, but I've never been more excited because this person is so near and dear to my heart. And we've been through the trenches together. You know, when you, you know, it's like war stories, you know, you just, you make an automatic connection when you, when you have someone, when you just been through hard times and we'll get to those times later. <laughs> but anyways, if you guys do not know, I am a fifth year pro played in the league all throughout, just finished up a Washington here at home in Bakersfield, California, resting up, getting ready to go play in Spain. We'll talk about that later because we, this, this episode all has connections within my life. So I'm just so excited. I played four years in Hungary, one year in Turkey, and like I said, about to go play in Spain, super hyped. This person here will know all about what I'm talking about. My reason for starting this podcast is to just help educate and help spread stories that have not been heard, that have not been told. These are amazing stories from amazing female athletes, and I'm here to share them, and that's what Bird's Eye View is all about. Each episode will bring on a different athlete or we'll break out a different topic, and today's guest is amazing. Today's guest, y'all, is my college teammate from Stanford University, number 44, Carly Samuelson. Y'all, if, if you guys, if you guys are watching on YouTube or, you know, we'll, we'll break down the clips. We're both wearing our Stanford tees. Yep. So thank you, Carl. Thank you for being on. Thank you, Birdie. Truly, I told you, I'm truly honored to be on your podcast. I've been watching from afar and um, you asked me the other day. I was super excited. <laughs> of course. Okay, so like I told Carl, like when I, when I go through, you know, what I'm going to uh, have on as guests, I have like a list of kind of people, you know, I already want to have on the show. And I guess kind of base it off of timing and everything of how it all work. And because this week, the Dream On documentary, um, the 30 for 30 ESPN documentary came on, our coach Tara Vanderveer was a focal part of the of the, the series because she was the 1996 Olympic coach. I said, why not bring on Carl? We have stories to tell. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> we have stories to tell. So I was like, Carl's a perfect person. We've been through some of the same stuff that the Olympic team was going through. So I thought it'd be cool to have her on. We'll talk about her Stanford experiences and of course her journey with the WNBA and overseas. Carl, let me read your bio first because everyone gets so kind of like, oh, no. but I love to hype up my guests. You guys are freaking amazing. So let me hype you up real quick. Okay. Carl's played for the Sparks the Dallas Swings, the Seattle Storm, and the <laughs> most recently, the Phoenix Mercury, okay? She's always ready, y'all. <laughs> She's a member of the British national team. She shares the record at Stanford for first in three-pointers made in a season with Jeanette Polin. And that number's 96. That's a lot of threes. And I'm just going to tell a lot of Tara stories within this all, but let me get to your bio. Okay. She's an All-American honorable mention in the 2016-2017 season, an all Pac-12 member, 2016-2017 season, and she has two Final Fours under her resume, y'all. Freaking dope. Freaking dope. I have a freaking legend on here, a Stanford legend, uh, just a women's basketball legend. I have, Carl, I'm claiming you as, everywhere I go, you're the best shooter ever. <laughs> so I'm the best shooter you. ever on my podcast. So oh, thanks, Bert. Who can say they have that? Who? <laughs> and of course, we are a podcast that talks about all professional basketball. So we can't forget about her overseas accolades, y'all. She's a two-time Spanish League champion and a two-time Euro League Final Four participant, which is freaking hard to do. I watch it. I haven't even played Euro League. I just watch Euro League. It's <laughs> freaking hard. So I can only imagine what she went through. We have a well-decorated guest on the podcast Carly thank you thank you thank you for being on again thank you Birdie I feel like we played together for so long our resumes kind of mirror each other so we were part of over half of that together 
I too went to two Final Fours. <laughs> Me and Carl, if no one knows um, or doesn't know Stanford basketball, we are the same class. So we came in together as freshmen, left together as seniors. So we w- literally went through everything the same. It's We just know each other like the back of our head. Not as close as her sisters, which we'll get to. Carl, we're about to play a game. Okay. About to play a game about okay. my guest. This game's called Shooter's Touch. I got Shooter on my team. Hey, that's a great Shooter name. on the pod. Okay, so first question, speaking of sisters, in a shootout with Bonnie and Lou, who's taking first, second, and third? You know, you, we first, could easily say, and third. yeah, we could easily say, like, who's going to win? But no, no, no. Mm. So obviously, you're going to say you. I want to know the placements. Thank you, Birdie. I absolutely am going to say me first. Of course. And anytime in my career, I still would have said the same thing. Um, I do have to say, Bonnie is retired. My older sister, she's two years older than me. She stopped playing after college. She went to Stanford as well. Um, freaking shooter, trail four, coming down, hitting at the top of the key. Um, yeah, the Bonnie trot. That's what we always said. <laughs> she doesn't play anymore, and she'll randomly come rebound for me and Lou, like, to this day, and just knock the first one in. Like, just, just knock the three in. So I, like... I don't want to do Lou an injustice, but I might say if it's like not a lot of shooting, Bonnie would get second and then Lou third. If it's a lot more shooting, like it's going to take time, Bonnie's going to get tired and then Lou will be second and Bonnie third. So depends on the. I like the explanation. I yeah. like that. Man, y'all, Bonnie was a sniper too. Ooh. Carly, I just played with her <laughs> for four years. So, of course, we, we were together. So, of course, I'm going to say Carl. But sh- y'all, Bonnie could shoot that thing. Mm-hmm. Can't shoot it. I mean, if you guys do not know the Samuelson legendary <laughs> history, they're shooters, y'all. They, their parents breed them. <laughs> it's like when <laughs> they breed. She was, we call, what do we call her? I mean, not everybody, but some people called her Bonnie the Bomber. Because like I said, she just came down trail four anytime I don't I had the blessing to play with Carly but I play with Bonnie as well do you know how an amazing an opportunity is to play with two Samuelson sisters <laughs> freaking amazing anytime you pass it to them it's going in like that's what we know hey, so, we, we haven't even talked about I remember the specific game bird when the three-point shooting broke out against Oregon State are you kidding me Bird came in. She hadn't hit a three her whole career. She knocked down three or four three-pointers. We were going crazy. Um, Sid still talks about that. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure, because it was against he her. still talks about the game. Y'all, I did not shoot threes at all. Like, I literally shot them, like, right before the three-point line. And Tara was like, hey, Bird, why don't you just scoot back and shoot a three? And I was like, so you're telling me I can shoot threes? Is, that's what you're saying. I'm not going to get in trouble. Yeah, Bird, just go and shoot threes. Boom. <laughs> Oh. Like three the first day. It was it was wild. It was incredible crazy. at home. Everyone was going crazy. Was and awesome. I learned from the best. I've 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 want to know a fun fact about that game bird. Tell I me. randomly like the ball. Literally, one of my rebounds was rolled all the way to half court, and I picked it up. But that was my first double double with rebounds. So I got a double double, and you hit four three pointers. <laughs> yeah, that was a crazy game because we had just lost the Oregon State. I don't know how much we lost to them, but we had lost to them. And we were coming into this game. We were missing people. We were playing at home, but we had a lot of anticipation for this game. And we freaking rocked the house. We beat them by 30. And both teams, I'm sure you talked about it with Sid, but the game, the scoring was so low because both teams were so good at scouting. Yes. And what do you know? The scouting report wasn't bird shooting three. <laughs> That's <laughs> so for sure. Game open. Yeah. I'm just so happy I made the first one. If I, made, if I didn't make the first one, I wasn't going to shoot them again. But I made the first one, uh-huh. and I was you know, I had my three point celebration. I, I was, I've actually, learned from the best. I feel like I've turned European. I'm only doing threes like this now. Mm. I big I, difference. I, I kind of like it. Fans, the European three is very different from the American three. The American three, you know, we hold up the like the okay sign for a three, but the European three is your thumb, your index finger, and your middle finger. So everybody, do that right now if you're listening in. <laughs> they okay. actually look like you're like shooting in the air it, boom 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 boom. i love the european three it's 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 funky and it's cool okay next question if you could play with any stanford player from the past so you didn't play with who would it be this is such a good question i have two answers to this i think go ahead i'll accept off I'll the accept top them. of the head mm-hmm. one 
I actually got the chance to play with NECA at the Sparks. So I didn't get to at Stanford, but remember that one practice she came and practiced with us, Bird? And we were like, like just literally she was playing above us. Like it was crazy. I was like, Tara, why would you do this? Yeah, I remember I we shot free throws after practice. You know, at, at Stanford, we have to make uh, 12 in a row free throws. And NECA was my rebounder. <laughs> I missed them every single time. I did not get 12 in a row that day. She was like, you know what, Bert? You definitely made about 50 in that round, though. It wasn't 50 in a row, but you definitely made about 50. <laughs> Thank, you, Thank you, NECA. Thank you, NECA. Shout out to NECA. And, and got, getting to play with her with LA was was incredible. And obviously, Chanae and NECA at the same time. It was like yeah. a little Stanford reunion. Yeah. Um, my other answer, I think I just have to say Jennifer AZ just after watching Dream On. Um, she, she just seems like a really cool person. And I've heard she's a really great coach uh, over these years. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know, just to experience that with her. Great answers. Man, she was freaking tough. Yeah. I love the Stanford representation during that whole doc because they had Katie in there as well. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, it, which she's also a Stanford coach with Tara right now. And I'm just like, man, the freaking, I love it. Just Stanford all the way through. And, and and I love it because we don't get a lot of, I'm probably saying this because we went to Stanford, but I'm just like, we just don't get them as much love as teams on the East Coast, just West Coast basketball in general. And so I really appreciated that the Pac-12 was represented well same. in the documentary. Same, same. Okay, next question. <laughs> this is the one that reminds us, <laughs> reminds me of college. Okay, let me say it fast so we can get it right. In five seconds, give me your favorite shooters of all time, male or female. Five, <laughs> four. How many? Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> Not the five seconds. Give, give me three. Give me three. Do I have a print, male or female? Yep. Ready? Oh, five, goodness. Four. I have to, I mean, I'm going to give a shout out. My sister, Katie Lou, Bonnie. Okay, I'm not going to do that, but I'm going to say okay. them, them number one on my list. But okay, I will say Steph Curry is up there. Mm. Um, I have to give a shout out to my girl, Kalina Mosqueda Lewis. I've been training with her a little bit at home. Ooh, wow. UConn legend, uh, SoCal legend. She's just phenomenal, like makes everything. So Kalina. And then college me wouldn't want to do this. College me would not want to do this. Mm. But I also have to give a shout out to the two snipers we played against for four years. Sydney Weiss and Kelsey Plum. I have to do it. I have to do it. And the quick story on, do you remember we played Washington in a regular season game at Washington? Yes. Crazy crowd. Down Russell and Sierra. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Kelsey Plum dropped 40 on us. She yep. was seven of eight from three. We won by like two or something. We ran out of there with the win. We were like, oh God. We took the win and rolled okay, it. That. Remember, Carl, that's when I gave shout out also heard the stare down. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all, I do not, I, I've never fought anyone in my life. I am just the, just the softest person ever. And me and Chantel, we're getting, we're going back and forth. And something happened. I don't know, like the ball, like when I, I don't know, I didn't even know what happened. But I gave her the, the meanest stare down. Everyone's like, hey, okay, Bird. Okay. Yeah. My coach's like, okay, Bird, I see you. Yeah. I was, was that Kelly? Uh, Kate actually said, it. and you know, Kate, Kate Pay is like down for the, she down for the fight. If, if there is any coach out there who's going to back you up, I'm not okay. saying we condole violence at Stanford, but she's a dog. And, you okay. know, we came, I went straight up to Kate after we ran off the court with that win on that exact game. And she goes, and Kelsey had 40 on us. And she goes, well, Carly, we held Kelsey to 17 in the second half. <laughs> I remember she was lighting it up. Oh, my gosh, start it. This girl, you know what, but you, who can say they beat Kelsey Plum with 40 points? It's just yeah. me. It's a tough thing to do. <laughs> Adversity. That was that, that whole year we faced. Adver we were down. We would only win games coming back down from 20. That was the only way we liked to our win. Our specialty. Games. Yeah. That was our specialty. Okay. Last question. I've been asking this the past three. No, this is the third episode I asked this. Of course, I have to ask this. With you. If you could create an all-star team with the Stanford teammates you played with, Oh, wow. So you got to do like a one through five. And I've been giving people a six man as well. Who would you choose? Okay. Oh, gosh. You know, I'm going to have to go with our squad. Exactly. Uh, so Damn it. we got we got Bird at the, the five or the four, whatever you want to do. Um, me, Bree Roberson, Brianna mm -hmm. Roberson. Um, 
Oh my goodness, Bird. Um, I got I, I got to bring Kylie Johnson in here. She she can, shout out to Kai. Okay. Yeah, to KJ. Kai. Shout out to KJ. So honestly, she could even play the three. Let's put her at the three. She could. She could Kale play. at the four or five. You guys choose your positions. You so four. That's what we did. Yeah. Kale five. KJ, Bree, me. We're missing somebody. You can name a six. You know who I forgot to name, and I'm so upset with myself when I did mine. Freaking Brittany McPhee. Oh, my. that's the one. That's who we're missing. I need another guard. B McPhee. Who's a freaking B. monster, McPhee. by the way? Monster. So B. Mc- Brittany McPhee, y'all. She played, if you guys, you know, pay attention to every basketball, freaking beast. But she also dabbled a little in the league. She played with Seattle for a little bit. But y'all, she's just like a dog. Like, Scoring machine. she'll go out there and like just do whatever you need. Like, defense offense and shoot threes gets to the basket with contact like she's just tough I, have, I do have to say also shout out to Atlanta Smith and of course I am like it's so great to see little freshman Dijanae freaking killing Dijanae was our freshman and she didn't play as much as a freshman but to mm-hmm. see her growth and where she is now dog baller she's killing it's amazing to see you know just because she's such a similar style of game that we're used to seeing when you know her freshman year but it's just it's just evolved even more you know it's developed and so man shout out to d i'm really proud of her shout out to atlanta shout out to all our sanford sisters out there you know still right. balling you know shannon out there not marta. marta yeah like shout out to all y'all we're still lexi right now you know we didn't play with her but yeah it's lexi. just super cool to see the stanford tree trickle down For so sure. Freaking love that. Okay. That was good. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just smiling, reminiscing. This is why I was so excited because I'm like, this is going to be such a fun podcast. Okay. Let's get into the interview portion of the podcast. Let's just start off with what were your thoughts on the 30 for 30, the the Dream On documentary? I mean, you texted us like the the Stanford alum group bird, Um, but it was, it was amazing. And like you said, I really, really feel proud to have played for Tara and to have gone to Stanford. Yeah. And then I also feel grateful for these women that went through all that to, to, to get a, give us the opportunities that we have today. You know, the W exists because of Tara and these women. Absolutely. They paved the way for us. Like I, I don't know what the feeling I had watching that. I felt inspired. I felt upset. I felt sad. I felt just a lot of different emotions um, watching that, but all in all, like you said, just a extreme honor to play for Tara Vanderveel. Like, I, I don't think we realized, or at least myself, I didn't realize how legendary she was when we were playing for her. Yeah, like, I think, like, I've heard her tell <laughs> that story, you know, I've heard other people tell the story of the 1996 Olympics, mm-hmm. how she was a coach, and, and all the things, and how long Tara has coached, you know, like, I knew, we knew she was big time, right? Mm-hmm. We knew what we were coming into, but I think watching the doc, like that is like global, literally historic for women's basketball. Like, I think, yeah, you, you spend every day with Tara. So you kind of get used to being around, I guess, the goat and you don't realize the goat status of the goat, <laughs> literally. Exactly. I just, I was like, man, like, that's my coach. Like, that's that's just the feeling I had. Like, that's my coach. And and it was just crazy to see the evolution. So let's talk about young Tara. First of all, let's talk about the Bob, because Tara's been rocking the Bob since birth. Bob Boca has been there, literally since birth, yes. <laughs> since birth, that's an, it's, it's I, I iconic cut. Suit, I thought the gray suit was the longest lasting thing of Tara, Me but too. it's the hair. It's, it's the hair, the- for sure. <laughs> Women's basketball fans, you guys know two things about Tara, and that's the bob cut, and that's the gray suit. Always in <laughs> yeah. for every game, she's going to wear that gray suit. We thought growing up, the growing up, growing up, in um, in school, yeah, that she had like five, five gray suits, the same, and would just pull them out <laughs> the closet, you know, like... Sundays game, Fridays game, and she would just, that's what I, at least I thought she had. I'm like, okay, there's no way she knows it's, it's the same gray suit. For sure, they're in rotation. It's just the same one. Is that what you thought? Absolutely. I Actually, though, how, she brought out that sweater a couple of times, you know, the sweater, I the it. classic I um, year. Thanksgiving Tara's- tournament, uh, linen shirts, you know. <laughs> the the linen shirts. Yeah. <laughs> our, ta- our senior year, Tara's really started to um, – 
branch out, you know, mm-hmm. for fashion. She was starting to wear this like card, these like sweet little cardigans. And, you know, she was really trying to, you know, I don't know where she went to go shop, but <laughs> someone went shopping with her and, you know, say, hey, Tara, maybe it's time. You know, just kind of jazz it up. And that's what she's been doing. And I've been seeing, I'm like, I've been so proud of her because all the way up to junior year from 1995 to <laughs> it was great suit, great suit, great suit. And she's been adding some color in there. So I'm so proud of her. So shout out to Tara. But let's talk about the practices in, in episode one. They were going in on my girl. Yeah, it, talk about a little heat on Twitter. A little she bit. Uh huh. People were asking me, were were you okay in practice because of what the 1996 team was doing they were they were they were working but like Tara said she said on a scale of one to ten it was an 11 (laughs) so and she also said I thought her quote was so spot on like when they were interviewing her like in real time now she was like you know I people say there's players coaches and I was not necessarily a player's coach, but I'm a, a great player's coach. And I think what she meant by that is like, if you buy into what she's doing, because she demands that excellence, you will get along fine. Yep. Like you'll get along well. And that's just who she is, like, and how she coaches. She demands excellence at all times. Like the clip you sent to the group, but the clip where she's like, all right, go get some water, jog. We're moving. We're moving. We're moving. We're, we're moving. moving. She literally made you run to get water or like jog and everything. It's like when you're working, you're working. And I appreciate that about her. We never walked. We never walked. We always jogged. We always moved. You could not sit down. Y'all, we practiced for three hours every single day, like at the dot, like never went under, never went under. Always three hours. Always. Oh, okay. She and wanted we, her time. <laughs> yes. Yes. And that was in, that was uh, in addition to lifting we had to do before or after practice. And so we were at the gym for like, uh, and, and not including the treatment you had to get before and after <laughs> Probably five hours a day at least yeah for yeah. sure for sure and it's just it's just crazy because the same stuff star was saying back in 1996 she was saying to us literally decades decades long of just, just she was saying to us like it's the like what she said the quote is like i'm a i'm a great players coach like yeah that's just such a that's just such a tara quote like <laughs> She would definitely say that to us. Yeah. She didn't say that necessarily, but that was something she would definitely say to us if we were playing at that time. Like, I'm a great player's coach. So do you want to win? Exactly. And I can't Would imagine you? the pressure she was under for this specific year. Like, that's a big, big decision to resign from Stanford for a year. Like she said, it probably was hard to leave seniors and leave players that are expecting to be coached by you that year. But she obviously knew, like, the the impact that that year could have and, like, Again, I'm very proud to have played for her and to that she took that step and like leap of faith to guide these players. And she even made one one of her comments was, you know, I'm not here. I'm not here to be the player's friends. I'm here to get the job done. And like and at a point they all like it clicked and they were together and she was like, maybe it was against me, but it's working. And that's kind of a big sacrifice to make to like be okay with players not liking you, but put to raise them to that next level. For sure. I think we experienced that as well. I think f- freshman to junior year, like towards like the mid junior, maybe mm-hmm. she was just like, no one, we never saw Tara like being a personable coach. And I think Jennifer said that as well. Like she was never a, or maybe it was Don, like we or, never like had, never a had a conversation. Yeah. yeah. Human conversation. But I think we, we oiled her up a little bit. That's but, what I said, like towards yeah. like a junior, senior year, like Tara, like, I don't know what happened. Like, <laughs> That old tar that y'all it's saw. It's our like, good old charm, Bertie. Our good old I guess. Charm. Yeah, I think it was our, I really think it was our class. Like yeah. we just had special people on there, but like she began to really open up and like ask us about like our families, ask us about things that we liked. I remember she did the sweetest thing. Like when just, we just never expected when she, she bought us books that she thought would cater to all of us. So we all got different books. Like she, I remember I got um, Secret Life of Bees. Oh. <laughs> that was my book that I got from her and I we just I just thought that was so special because at no point before that she had never like thought of you individually like hmm Erica McCall what is she like yeah I, I do wonder what clicked like I remember too specifically I think it was my junior year as well I don't know I maybe she was already going to do this and she pretended it was for me but I, I like almost broke my nose in practice I think and the next day 
she brought brownies and said, hey, Carly, this is because you, you almost broke your nose. She probably was making them anyway for the team, but you know, I felt special at the time. Yeah, just, just to see the evolution of her, it's, it's been really cool because Tara was a lot harder back then and she, but she did what she had to do. She was young. She had to earn people's respect. She had to do what she had to do, you know, to get wins and it's been successful for her. But I think now she's gotten older and I mean, it's just a new generation now. She's just seeing, you know, that it's a different method to, to coaching. You, I'm sure in 1996, you would never see Tara back there dancing, doing the yeah. freaking soul train line. <laughs> Mind <laughs> dancing oh, after yeah. a win. Yeah. Like it's just it's just crazy to see, and I'm just I'm just appreciative of her. I remember the things that she would go out and do for us. I remember um, it was the final four. So <laughs> when we were like on our maybe we were, it was our journey to the final four, our senior year, and um, I think it was like the elite eight or something like that. Our bus had broken down, like right before the game. And we're like, oh shoot, like are we gonna make it? Are we gonna make it? So we they ended up like fixing it or whatever, and then we got on. We ended up winning the game. Um, I think that was like the Sweet 16. So the Elite Eight game, <laughs> that's what it was, Elite Eight game, we're going to go play um, Notre Dame. The bus breaks down again. We're like, oh my gosh, again? Like, yo, like the bus bringing down. Yeah, so I we're, sit- we're sitting there for like five minutes and like just like waiting for them. And then they tinker with or whatever. And like the bus driver goes out. She comes back, the bus, we get on the bus, whatever. We go, we win the game. It's all crazy. Did you know that Tara set that up? Are you kidding? Yep, I heard that. You're joking. <laughs> yeah, no freaking wonder. There's no way the bus would I break set that up. She set that up for the for the bus to fake break down so we could find be like, out. oh my gosh, like again. <laughs> and How did you find out she set that up? I won't ever reveal my sources. <laughs> but later, like much someone later. On, yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone on staff told me that. That's so funny. <laughs> That's classic Tara. Tara move, actually. Tara's all about omens. <laughs> yeah omens yeah. oh my good like omens like you know good or bad omens and so like if some something's good tara's gonna like keep rolling with it and so yeah i found out that the bus didn't break down she that, said that that's up. also a tara thing to actually like never tell us yeah that, she did that that's so funny yeah she was probably for like <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> i know the coach were just cracking up right <laughs> and we're like oh my gosh the bus is breaking down she's like hey just go to probably through the bus drive like hey just go out there and tinker with the front you know just pull a couple things come back on the bus be like there it is oh my gosh I'm so glad you told me that that's hilarious and so it's, classic time. that's just the type of things that she does like to help her team become successful like she knows it's all a mindset for us you know like going into it but she's trained it so well and I think that's an amazing thing about Tara people always ask like what makes Tara so successful it's her attention to detail the way she trains us is so militant like when we play teams we knew every single move, every single move. You asked me a player, I knew her favorite move, which way she liked to go, which way she liked to shoot, which way we gonna double her. Well, we joke, we, all, we would always joke, like we knew the other players' majors that they were studying. We literally like studied the other team. Every game, we didn't matter quiz. game either. It didn't matter regular season or, or tournament time. We would get quiz, like she would, they would throw it back on like, okay, what she like to do? Whole team had to name it. Every everybody knew what she was doing, not just the bigs. Like uh, we, I knew what Kelsey Plum was going to do Every because position, yeah. it was just going to be a point in time that we were going to have to adjust to anything and everything. And then we'd be getting mad because <laughs> something that was not on the scout. We're like, "Yo, we study. This girl is not doing that on the scout. She's yeah, not. <laughs> you know, you know those Oregon State players were saying that when you were knocking those threes down, Bird was not on the scout." <laughs> But that's what I appreciate so much. And I think that's what made um, or has allowed us to be successful professionally because the way that Tara, Kate, Amy, Tempe had trained us mentally and and just built our basketball IQ up because going into the league, like I already, I know how to read a scouting report. I know the details on that. I'm going to know every single thing about a player. I'm going to study up really and I, well. And I was just going to say, I think, and executing on that too executing the show yes like and I think that's what makes us like good defenders and I'm not necessarily usually considered a good defender but in my European career I've actually like I'm very solid defensively Mm -hmm. and I think when I'm given a scout or when I scout myself I being like anticipating things that that helps me and I learned that at Stanford and I learned that from Tara absolutely I think um 
just the way that man should she just trained us from freshman year to like senior year like just the a four years of knowledge from from Tara and Kate and, and and everyone out there it has made me a better person like it has prepared me for life <laughs> life the stuff that we went through at Stanford has prepared me for like some of the hardest times I've been through in life um because they 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 put us in um in adverse situations the trenches like you said the at the trenches of the podcast you they would put us honest. in <laughs> exactly they would put us in I remember sophomore year they put they knew they was it was gonna rattle us up I think it was like uh, whoever would get the, the offensive rebounds and the, box we out were, the <laughs> box out drill and when we were competing against each other it was like teams against each other and so we were like she's like I don't care what you guys have to do <laughs> we were like like really about to fight each other and so then like whoever lost would have to run and we're like but we were like get it and amy's like don't get your panties in a bunch <laughs> amy oh my god no i remember that exact drill burn because the rules weren't even like correct it was oh, like what? this one will get a point but if the, if the defense gets a point they get two but either way the offense gets a point every time so that it like me and taylor greenfield were like wrestling each other to the ground and like it didn't matter honestly what would happen. Tara just wanted us to go hard, be physical, and like honestly run and not like and not take it easy on one another. She literally created that environment and it was necessary at the time. Mm-hmm. We didn't think that at the time, but like looking back, we it helped us down the, down the line. Yeah. It did. It did. And so I was great before, like the way that they put us in those things and allowed me to like really come in and like we had to use each other as support. And that was just like the 1996 team. Like we really had to like lean in on each other. Like, come on y'all. Like, and we would say, this is such a, like a popular term now. Cause the, the, the younger generation of Stanford uses this, we would say code red and code red was something that was not known. It was just within the players, you know, and code red was like, you do anything by any means necessary. We're going to get this freaking done. And that's yeah. when we would come together. And low key, it was like code red players almost versus Tara. And like it talked about in that documentary, that's a pretty big sacrifice Mm -hmm. to make to kind of like want, not want the players to not like you, but like want them to do it almost in spite of you. But either way, you're getting them to reach their level. Like, and then in the end, you appreciate her because off the court, you know, we loosened her up a little bit. So she, yeah. we would have those nice conversations, but yeah, I think like as a coach, she, she really nailed that down. Like yep. she got her team to do what was needed to win. To buy in. Like that was like the, the, the point of it all. And, and we've been on teams that we had teams that didn't buy in and we weren't a successful team. Yep. We know it. I won't mention which year that was for us, but <laughs> year baby that was awesome you know senior year we'll talk about senior year is like when we like we got this new form of Tara we've had a completely different mindset because we had gone through changes like we had teammates that left and we were just really trying to find our our new identity too like as a team because we had just people leaving and we're trying to figure it all out so and when our senior year man like that was my favorite team I ever played on maybe Tara loosened up and maybe that was the best year because she did have a team that bought in and like for someone that her whole life has fought to play basketball, girls couldn't play. So she fought the boys and the men to play. She took this Olympic team to play like all her whole life. So it's probably hard for her to relate to a team or players that don't buy into the point that she does, because yeah. it's a, like a privilege and an honor to be able to play basketball, especially when she created this platform almost. Mm-hmm. So it's probably why that we had a great season that year. Cause we bought in for her. Absolutely. And I think that's when she had her a thousand, her thousand win. Yeah. Thousand, thousand win. And I remember it was like going into that game, like we didn't want to do it for anything else, but for Tara or like, we, let's do this for Tara. And I think that's just the person that she is, the coach that she is when you have players that want to do something for you, that want to help you celebrate. And it was just, that was a grand moment. And ah, I remember that game. Yeah. Cause to see her dedication pay off, it's just, mm-hmm. no one can say that Tara is not dedicated. Yes. She works hard. And so it's cool to see her success. Absolutely. So Tara, um, I'm going to try to get you to listen on <laughs> this. I just, I just want you to know that we're giving you your flowers and you are appreciated. All the coaches that we went to, I don't want to forget um, Amy Tucker, who's really been with Tara her whole career. And Amy's gone to retire now. And she's like, I'm done with this. Tara 
keep doing you. <laughs> but I'm Amy's through, been through that with us. Kate pay Kate played for Tara in the night. She's won championships with her. Um, and now she's coaching with her. And she was like, that was like our, that now that was the person that was going to get us going. Mm -hmm. Tara mentally Tara was going to push you, but Kate, she was going to get you to do it physically. <laughs> Absolutely. Sound the Kate. And then you guys, you would always have like a coach that like, man, damn it. <laughs> a coach you can go and cry to because the other coaches would bring um, you down. And that was Tempe for us. <laughs> yeah, but for real, shout out. Yeah, shout out to, to you guys um, those four years. Honestly, I think we've grown like so much. And like Bird's saying, that's why we're still having the success. So thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Well, let's transition out of Stanford was beautiful times. And thank you for helping me reminisce, Carl, because we could have done that for hours. But <laughs> let's talk more about you individually and your journey with the league. You play with four different teams. How would you define your, you know, your time with the league so far? Yeah, it's been great and difficult at the same time. Um, so yeah, four teams. I'm a third of the way through the league. Um, You're almost way. catching up to Sierra. Yeah, yeah. Well, what's Sierra? <laughs> um, eight. Eight. Yeah, no, I'm not that good. <laughs> um, I think I'm, you probably spoke to Sierra about this, um, but it's like, it's, it's great and it's difficult at the same time. Like, and you probably know this as well, Bird, but there's, there's so little spots in the league. Like, compared to the number of, of women that are coming out of college, of, of girls that are playing in high school and, and the talent like rising and, and increasing, it's uh, great to see, but I really want the league to expand so that people can play. Like yep. you have a lot of players like us that are in the middle, right? Of, of like maybe age and talent. Like, I don't know, we're in the middle, we're role players where we're not these young rookies coming in and we're not like, that like locks like stars and we kind of get pushed out and it's really hard to make a roster and at least from my experience like I my my first year out of Stanford I got invited to Sparks camp and I I think I was just like let's go like it's super fun and I made every shot literally every shot and I actually was going to make the team and I broke my foot the day before rosters were due mm -hmm. so that was like super unfortunate but they were like come back next year and so I went to Italy I came back um I made the team the next year I didn't I so I was on the roster kind of for that season um again I had to not start on the roster because there wasn't a big enough salary cap for 12 person <laughs> so that I had to wait literally like a month and a half for them to be able to sign me so another weird thing like I so kind of a full season but pretty much and then again like in and out of the sparks for the next year I played with Dallas for a 10-day contract um played for sparks and other seven days next time and like Phoenix for two days because of COVID um yep. but these injury hardships these seven days like you, you will go play on a team like and I played 25 minutes literally with my stint with the Sparks for my full season I averaged one minute per game my injury hardship playing I played 25 yeah. minutes each game and yeah. I it's because there's injuries there's less players but right. You're going in and playing your 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 biggest minutes in the WNBA without crazy. one being in really good shape and with the team and two not practicing with the team. And it's just yeah. a, it's almost like, well, I hope I make a shot, you know, like, <laughs> and, and I hope I do good, but it's it's hard, and I Which, feel for a lot of players that do this. Yeah, I mean, it's like you and Sierra have done this, where you have the hardship and you have like the ten days. Like, what what's your mindset going in? Because are you hoping at like? I'm hoping this, you know, works out. Like maybe they'll, they'll call me back for like, you know, the rest of the season or you just like, Hey, let me go ahead and do my job. I'm here for a week. Let me, you know, meet new people and make the most out of the opportunity. I think it's a combo. I think I can tell each time what like the situation is like Phoenix. I knew I was there just for a COVID call, uh, an injury hardship. So it was going to be really short. So I just enjoyed my time. I got to play with Diana. Um, so check that off my bucket list. It was awesome. It's tough. Um, Skyler, you know, Tina Charles, that was, that was awesome. Um, shout out to Vanessa Nygaard, Stanford coach. Um, mm -hmm. But it just depends. So last year I got brought in on an injury hardship for the Sparks and it was some pretty longer term injuries. And I was like, you know what, let me just go play. Like I was excited, um, but I was like, there's no fear. It's just basketball. I used to be nervous we've been playing in Europe for so long bird like we we played against the best literally yeah. like in your yeah. league I just played the finals against starting against Brianna Stewart who was playing the three position like wild things you know yeah. and 
just basketball. And so last summer I, I did that and I ended up being brought back, brought back. And then I signed with Seattle for the rest of the season. So different, different situations, different mindsets, yeah. but last season showed me like, Hey, confidence takes you so far. And like, it, it really does get you in through the door, like do what you do on the court and, and trust yourself. Um, I know I, I can play in this league and I know that I'm good enough. It's just yeah. opportunities, timing, roster spots, you know, it's, it's, it's so difficult. And I love how you mentioned just the mindset going into it because I, I'm like, dang, I forgot I played in a hardship. And like my mindset was like, dang, like, okay, I want to go in and like meet all these cool people. And like, but I don't like want to get like too close to them because like, I don't want to be like, oh, like, oh, I miss yeah. them. Like, and it, has that like been uh, an issue with you? Like where you like, you go in, you go in deep, maybe when you're playing young, you're a younger player and you like, were going in deep for like these hardship and you like really making the most of it. And like when it leaves, like you were heartbroken. Has that ever been a case? Um, I think last summer, if I was let go and it didn't end up being, um, on Seattle, I think I would have been heartbroken after mm-hmm. playing with LA for like a month and a half, um, and doing well, you know, yeah. like you see people on hardships actually do well, and then they're just let go yep. because that's the situation that that's pretty heartbreaking when you, yeah. you, you play either more than some people on the bench or whatever, for whatever reason, and you do well. And it's like, okay, well, thanks. You know, that's a yep. weird thing for sure. Um, I don't know. The W is a difficult place. Like you said, it's like very difficult Great to meet new people, but like, I'm such a basketball, such a team yes. sport, and I'm such a team player building yep. relationships, building team connections that it's hard to like, just go out and hoop on like a team level mm-hmm. when you're just, Hey guys, how's it going? I don't know when I'm here and when I'm leaving, like yep. it's an interesting thing. And I'm very much, I love that about basketball. I love the team aspect of it. So that part is for sure difficult. No, for sure. I remember when I was like with Atlanta and I, we just didn't know when the players were going to come back from COVID. So it just kind of like, well, this could be like my, my last day. Like, I don't know. I just like go make the most out of it and just, and see what happens. You know, you just, you just got to wait to see, you know, when, when they're going to call you. So the W is just so difficult. And I think people see this, the, the glamorous side of things and the, the league really promotes, you know, like we always say the league promotes this, these 10 players or whatever and then we never get to hear the stories about like the middle players even like the players like you know we're on towards in the bench you know get a lot of minutes and like we just don't see like the grind and the mental toll that it takes on you I know it's 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 difficult for me anytime like I get a call like hey you know we appreciate you (laughs) but sorry yeah it's that whole other side of too like okay definitely super grateful for all the experience to any moment in the league like it's not to be taken for granted it's amazing to get that chance but then you have the entire other side of like okay where do all these players go like where are you training how are you paying for that training if you're younger you know maybe you haven't made money yet to try to stay in shape for these opportunities that's a grind in itself when you is it summertime so I can rest and wait for my European season or do I need to be in shape just in case for a call it's um like financially like timing like mindset like it's 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 heavy too like and and I don't know I'm still at the point where I love training so like for mm-hmm. me I, I hang out with my friends I hang like I get to be around people so I enjoy it um so any call I, I actually am like excited about it but mm-hmm. I really do feel for it's and it's a really big community of players it's it's so many people that are in this bubble Yep. Um, and especially now, like, do you go overseas? Do you not? Do you take the chance to try to make the league? Or or do you have, you know, like, how do you know how you're going to make money if you decide not to go overseas and hope make the league and you don't? Okay, that's an entire year. You don't have money coming in yep. playing basketball. I'm so happy AU is like rising and it's cool to yep. see this opportunity. Um, and I hope we're continuing to grow like in, I don't know, the company I work for Parity, this is what things we're trying to do. Like, yep building up elite women athletes in all sports but these are the types of things I love this about your podcast where that are telling these stories that aren't really told let you hit a few nuggets for me that that impacts me right now (laughs) everyone knows like I'm out I'm dealing with injury I'm trying to get back in you know shape and rehab and all that good stuff let's talk about like when you get out of like how difficult it is I just feel like I haven't had any support any support from the league, any resources. Like, I feel like I've been like trying to do everything on my own and it's just been really difficult. It's like financially, like having to, now that I'm not on the league insurance, 
I'm through Cobra now having to pay that. And so that's an adjustment and it's freaking expensive. Y'all won't say how expensive it is, but it's, it's really expensive. So paying that monthly, then having to go and pay for my doctor's visits. And then I'm like, now I feel like I'm a real adult. Like who freaking invents insurance? You have to get insurance, but then you have to pay for the deductibles until the insurance starts to pay. So you're paying for <laughs> insurance oh, you're paying yeah. for the deductibles on top of, it's just, it's just so expensive. And I'm like, but I'm not having any income coming in yet. I'm still trying to figure out, okay, like, am I going to get back into the league? Like, do I, do I train? Like I'm getting back to the league. Cause I don't want to be out of shape if somebody calls, but how do I rest my body? Mm-hmm. And it's just been really mentally taxing, like, and just feeling, and then there's days where like feeling like I'm just training for nothing. <laughs> like, and that, like that's the beginning of the season. When you don't have that fire or motivation, when you don't really know what you're training for exactly. Yep. Like, that is so difficult. Like, and like you're, you're touching on the financial aspects of it. It's like, it's it's so difficult. Where we're, we're tw- what are you twenty seven too? Are you twenty seven now? Twenty seven in August. Twenty seven in August. Well, <laughs> well you're twenty six, so we're off our parents' insurance. Yeah, insurance. first year. And so for people, exactly, and that happened to me last year. And so for people that don't play in that or that maybe are in and out of the league in the summers, yeah, we play Europe overseas. We're covered. The summertime, oh man, we gotta pay for health insurance. Yeah, just like you're saying, it's it's a very real thing. That was the most adult thing I had to do last summer too. Yeah, I was I hate oh. It. I hate it. I'm like, what the heck? Every time I go to PT, like, yeah, you don't have, you didn't hit your deductible yet. So we're just going to keep paying until you. I'm like, this is expensive. Now it's like, now I can like only afford certain sessions. I mean, I got money y'all, but (laughs) it's like, still you want to see, you don't want to pay all this money. Like I can't afford to go to PT every single day because I have to pay, keep paying the deductible until I hit it. It's just, and this is why, so I work for a company called Parity and last summer, um, they offered me a full-time position. Yep. And what we do at Parity is we're a community of elite women athletes. We have like 750 plus right now of all sports, college and pros. And we're dealing, and we connect, um, these athletes to brands for paid sponsorship posts. But what I'm in charge of also is trying to provide resources for the community. So we just did a mental health workshop the other day with Amani McGee Stafford was our speaker. Um, trying to provide educational resources on finance tips, on things like this. And it's every sport, but we're just talking about basketball here. People are, or pro athletes are running into this problem, yeah. especially the middle of the pack where like, we don't have giant sponsorships that could maybe cover something. We're not a lock in the league for insurance, for a literal job opportunity, like to play in the States. And so we're trying to provide at least financially resources with sponsorships and things like that. But this is a huge topic that continues to need to be talked about because huge community, it's almost the community is bigger than the actual community of people that have jobs in the yes. States. It's a bigger yes. population. And so I don't know, like my, I'm really proud to work for this company and we're trying to come up with ways to help provide resources and different things for this giant community of pros or college that are coming out of pros to find different ways where they can still play their sport in their country and in a a financially stable way and and train and and be taken care of and not feel alone yeah child of parody i was working with y'all a little bit in the pandemic and you guys were providing resources on now because you guys i have a resume (laughs) i did not have a resume before i didn't know how to make a resume that's a crazy thing too like as athletes, like we don't, we don't do that. Like we're not in the real world. We're like, all we do is focus on training, like for basketball, of course, like when we're in college, we're focused on school, but they don't teach us how to make a resume. I didn't know how to do that. And so taxes, shout out to parity. Taxes, health insurance. Right. So many things. Yeah. So many things. So I have a, um, an accountant that helps me with my taxes, but I just, if I didn't like, and I'm shout out to like my agent, Mike Count, who like connected me through that. But if not, I'd be like, I have to ask my mom, like, mom, like, how do I do this? Yeah. How do I file my taxes? So Man, just we're touching all the things that like the resources that are needed. Like me and Sid were just talking about like the resources that are needed for athletes who are like in that bubble or who are just getting out the league and are trying to figure out life. And so shout out to y'all. We'll actually plug you guys in the um, the description if anyone wants to check out Parody sure. and um, you know the resources that they provide. So shout out to them. We're just getting so deep. <laughs> I was like, you know, I need to tell my story. These are real issues though. These are real yeah. things that we're having to deal with. Like you going to pay for PT to be able to be in health to maybe play in the league if there's a call or to go overseas and continue your job like it's it is it's it's 
pretty it's it's an alone feeling but i'm glad like your podcast is bringing attention to these things bird i'm glad we all got to like combine and come up with ways where we can stick together for sure thank you carl no this is this has been dope and this conversation is just just needed people need to hear it okay let's get back on to basketball (laughs) what is it like been playing with your sister lou so you play with carl i mean you play with um with Bond and Stanford and now on the professional level you're playing with Lou what's it just been like to be able to play with your sisters man I mean you were with me with Bonnie so that was amazing just going to college away from home for the first time being with my sis um literally a sisterhood so that's how like our team ended up feeling senior year but playing with Lou overseas man that was a that was like a little dream I had that I was like, oh, maybe, you know, we can play pro when you're out of college. Like, but I didn't think it would actually happen. And then COVID came and, you know, I played for uh, my Spanish team and I was like, you know what, Lou, come like, let's see if we can play together. And man, you got someone on the court in practice everywhere. You can talk about everything together. And no matter what, she's going to pass me the ball or she's going <laughs> to ask me the question, you know, it's like that chemistry is there yeah. and it's automatic. And so that, that, I think that just brings so much to a team, to be honest. Like, you know, you've played with Dewana, you yep. play with her sister. So it's just some, it's just so special. You share it every is. moment together, but also that connection on the court really elevates the team. It is. I think the craziest part is my first time ever playing with my sister. And it was like, when we were like getting on each other, like to be better, like that was like, I was like, like, I was like, can I say this? I'm like, no, it's my sister. Like, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> she's gonna be fine but like I think that was like my favorite part of it because we're like come on like lifting each other up but like still getting on each other I'm like come on D like we need you to shoot that shot and she's gonna need to make my free throws which has been a problem my whole career <laughs> no but it's real coming from your sister yeah it and is you know no matter what they have your best intention at heart yep so yep. Uh, it was really 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 amazing to play with Lou um to play significant like to start together play significant minutes and to yep. win together like it just it felt it felt great. Like it, it was awesome to win together. That's beautiful. And so, so let's, let's, let's move on to like, since playing in Spain, let's just talk about your, your Spanish experience and what it was like playing with Salamanca. I'm saying this as well, because I'm going to play this. <laughs> so I want to hear what your experience about, not only for the fans, but for myself as well. Yeah. I'm Bert. I told you, I'm super, super excited for you. You're going to literally love it. Um, I love Spain. It has my heart. The league has my heart. Um, the fans, it was like moments I'll never forget, to be honest. I don't want to get emotional, but it was an amazing, amazing experience to be able to play with Lou. Um, my girls on the team, shout out to Sylvia, Dre, uh, my Leo, like you're going to love them. Um, and to, to be successful, like in EuroLeague, and you're going to be so exciting to play in EuroLeague. Like, I, I love that league so much. Like, it's yeah. super visible. It's um, an incredible league. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. It's like, I, like you can tell, it's just, it's meant the world. She's to me. beaming, yeah. y'all. She's <laughs> beaming. Yeah, no, I, I'm really excited about it. And, I mean, Spain is just a beautiful country. And, and you were speaking, you know, so highly of, of Salamanca and, and saying, you know, that's just going to be a dream come true to be able to live there, like to live in Spain. And I'm just, I'm high because I love speaking Spanish. Um, hey Talk yo hablo espanol un poco. Uh, but no, actually, no, I, I know a decent amount of Spanish for, for yo, someone. Okay. <laughs> oh like, um, I, Again, everyone speaks English, so I didn't practice enough, like actually speaking, but I understand everything. So it's so you understand everything now. Okay. So yeah. I need to, somebody need to really go out and like speak with the locals, you know, or like really try to speak Spanish when I go to like the grocery stores. That's where you like, honestly, that's where you like apply the languages that you are when you're overseas is when you go to like the public areas, yeah. <laughs> like the grocery stores. Okay. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. So I'm I'm super excited for that, and I love speaking Spanish. We would we practice all the time in, in college together. <laughs> yeah. Like, go sit in the plaza, go enjoy the sun. I'm excited. Uh, so excited, and of course to be be coached by Roberto. I mean, I was um, playing against him when he was at Chopron for like mm-hmm. at Chopron for a couple of years. Yeah. I don't know, two three years maybe. And like, I'm like, man, like, frick, this team is always freaking good. Like, he just always has them able yeah. to to do what he, they need to do exactly he holds you to that standard of excellence for sure um I told you when you first told me I'm, I'm excited for you to play for him and 
I appreciate him a lot. Like he got, he, I, I got to play the way that I love basketball to be mm-hmm. played. Like I could do my role the best of my ability. And it was just, you're going to love it. Yeah. Everyone speaks really highly. My sister played with him um, a while back and she was like, he's like one of my favorite coaches. Like, he's tough. He's yeah. tough, but he's great. And I think that I've always been really successful under the toughest of coaches. Like, they are freaking hard. Practices are hard, but like they've made me the best players that I've been. Tara, um, my coach Jaco in, in Hungary, like he's freaking Serbians are crazy. I'm <laughs> down to Serbians. <laughs> They're freaking crazy, but like he had made me a better player for sure. And like just um, being able to play like team basketball, like that's something you don't usually see overseas. Um, it's very individualistic style especially for Americans but like he like I was not a superstar on that team I was a part of the team and but we were successful and I loved it that's why we were successful at Stanford that year like yep. I, that's the way basketball should be played that's the way Absolutely. that you and I play and that's the way I enjoy the most so big man I love basketball really really and I love yeah. like the right basketball or like my, my style of basketball mm-hmm. Which I think is my style of basketball. So <laughs> I guess that's why we were so successful together. Don't lie, baby. Don't lie. <laughs> okay. Carl, you played on two championship teams. You played on, you went to the Final Four in the yearly twice. You, you know, went to or won the Spanish uh, championship twice, Final Fours, Pac 12 championships at Stanford. Give me characteristics of a championship team. Hmm. I think. I mean, we were just talking about playing as a team. So I think unselfishness. Mm-hmm. I think every player knowing their role and yes. playing their role to the best of their ability. I think like one through 12, like there's no problems. Like you're there for each other. It's like a sisterhood, like a family. Um, I think attention to detail on offense mm-hmm. and defense. And then with that, I think defense being as important as the offense team oriented defense and team oriented offense I think those are that's how teams win and consistency throughout the season to work on those things consistency yes really big I think that I mean sometimes most of the time I remember our defense at Stanford rather than our offense like I remember like Mm -hmm. the doubles that we used to bring I remember we were on the the plane we we had just beat Cal like and we had doubled the heck out of Christine anyway she couldn't do nothing (laughs) <laughs> like we knew like hey, we don't want from the top or we don't from we don't from carl or we don't <laughs> i'm coming and we <laughs> i'm coming <I'm-> <laughs> and i remember she was like she she sat next to tara on the plane she's like tara how did you guys do that <laughs> i remember i remember this exactly actually <laughs> shout out to christine yeah <laughs> she was freaking an amazing player back at cal we had a lot of battles back and forth but like yeah, she plays, Um, she's British as well. So I play with her on Great Britain and I just got to see her with Mercury. So shout out to Christine and her amazing uh, KA original. Yes, yeah, her, her clothing line, shout out to her. But yeah, I just remember the defense that we had to stand for. Like, that was like, we were just freaking good. Like, <laughs> he just knew what to do. Just, like, yeah. and focus. of course, focus. offensively, focus. Yes, focus, that's that's huge. And, and staying focused for a long period of time. Yeah, facts. Long periods. Long period. I mean, those, those three hour practices, like, <laughs> there it is for that. Like, so we didn't have like drop offs in games because games are what, only two hours or something, like hour and plus, a half? Plus the 75 minutes of warm up. <laughs> yes, plus a long warm up. Warm ups do not count. Warm ups do not count for the three hours. Warm ups do not count. I'm like, what? <laughs> Get your shots in before 30 minutes at least. <laughs> yes, please come in before the shoot. This is not count as practice. Bro. Come. <laughs> again that reminds me of like they made they made sure we knew that every day that it did not count just like they made sure the dream on uh, olympic team they said yeah this is not the real for real team you could be cut at any moment any moment <laughs> i'm so happy that in college we don't have to we didn't have the experience that like your scholarship could be up like that i will be so scared under pressure like what stressed yeah no no stress i'm like okay i'm a freshman I'm going to mess up. I'm going to screw up. Well, then, yeah. Guys, freshman year, Carly was, <laughs> Carly has a really basketball, a really high basketball IQ. So she can adjust to situations and learn things easily. I mean, not so, not so much. It takes me time. Hey, we got there. It takes me time. There. I mean, I, you know, Bert, I, mean, I, need, I need this. I don't have the speed or the, or the jumping or the strength. So 
<laughs> it helps me out. That brain got Carly playing time. Okay, she was wrong. Me and Kylie Johnson, they called us Kurt because every time it was Carly and Bird. I mean, sorry, Carly and Bird. Kylie and Bird. Kylie and Bird, come over here. Kylie Bird. and Bird, that's not the that's not the drill. <laughs> Kylie and Bird, that's not the drill. Kylie and Bird, you guys messed up the play again. <laughs> Shout out to KJ. Okay. So we called ourselves Curd because Tara was on us every single day. We stayed messing up every single thing. And so, yeah, but it took us time. The Rebecca Lobo of the dream team. We were the Rebecca Lobo of the dream team. That was, that was us. We were young and dumb. <laughs> <laughs> it messed up everything, but it took us time. But I think playing SN for four years has allowed me to be able to adapt to situations quickly, allowed me to learn quickly. That's how allowed me to stay on teams, honestly, because coming in late from training camp, having to learn all 25 plays in one day and just be like, okay, Erica, you're in and having to run it just like that. And okay. my four years at Stanford helped me with that. For sure. Freshman year, oof, I would have, I would never made teams if I was <laughs> who I was freshman year, but shout out to everyone that helped me out. Helped me and Kai out because we were struggling. We Look were at struggling. Now. Look at me now. <laughs> Learning plays. Um, okay, Carl, last question. What would you say to, or what advice would you give players who, who've gone undrafted? They don't see themselves like high on draft boards, you know, they're, but they want to make it to the league. They want to play professional basketball. What advice would you give them? I've been asked this before, and this is such a good question. Um, I think if you love basketball, like that's, that'll take you where your path needs to go and where it's going to take you so I think there's different ways to the league and like if you're not drafted one and you're invited to camp go enjoy the experience and just go for it and if it doesn't work out then go on to the next thing and there's opportunities in Europe and I think sometimes there's a negative thing it it, it is unfortunate that there's not as many spots and places to play in uh, the U.S. right now and hopefully that grows but right now I don't think it's a negative thing to go to Europe. I think it's an incredible experience. Uh, like there's, there's different, you, people have different experiences and there's different countries to go to, but there's opportunities out there if you want to play. So I think like, don't get down and just keep playing. And like, like, look at, you have like Rebecca Gardner has played overseas for a very long time. And she's, she's 31, I think. And she just got her first uh, WNBA experience. She's a rookie. Mm-hmm. I played against her all this year. She was playing for Jerome in Spain. She got MVP of the Spanish league it's kind of incredible for someone to be like that and who hasn't played in the league yet. Yeah. She found her place and she's, she's, I'm sure she likes her life in Spain. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm super happy for her, but there's different ways to the league and there's different like opportunities out there if you want to play basketball. So don't get down. Like there's, you can change your, your goal can still be to make it to the league, but it doesn't have to be the same path that other people maybe aren't getting. Absolutely. Beautiful beautiful advice Carly thank you for being here this has been amazing just be able to reminisce with you and then just be able to relate just to know that there's somebody else going through you know what I'm going through so thank you Carl but before we end this podcast episode you know I gotta do the story of the day and that's when I asked my guest what was your wildest (laughs) overseas experience I thought about this I've been thinking about it we played in freaking my my sophomore year. Oh my god, my second year overseas. I'm playing for a Euroleague team in Belgium. We traveled to Orenburg, Russia, which is by Kazakhstan, way over there. <laughs> and we get off the plane, bird, and our luggage is lost. And so we go to practice in like our whatever we traveled in. Luggage doesn't make it till the next day. We go out there, the van pulls up with the luggage. I kid you not, the lock was frozen and he couldn't get the luggage out. I'm not kidding. The hour and a half drive he rode from the airport to where we were, the lock was frozen and he could not, he was like, it's broken, it's broken. And he drove away like to go an hour away for someone to fix it. And we didn't get our luggage like literally till the next night. (laughs) We were like, this has to be a reality show. So what did you guys do? What did you guys wear? What did we put back on our sweaty travel clothes and did another practice in the same clothes. I'm not kidding. Me and my roommate went like after the second practice, even after the first one, we were lying in our beds, just naked in our towels because I didn't have any other clothes. 
<laughs> but we were like, yes, the band's here. And he's like, it's broken. It was frozen shut. <laughs> That was my first ever Russia experience. <laughs> Yo, overseas is so crazy. I love <laughs> these stories. Wild. You should make a compilation of these birds because that is crazy. I am. You know what? I want to do that. What episode is just going to be? It's just going to be overseas stories. Yeah. Yes. Boom, 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 boom. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's <funny>. freaking wild. <laughs> well, Carl, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being on once again. Um, where can we find you on social media? Also, shout out Parody and, and, and where we can find Parody as well. Yes, social media, Instagram is just my name. Twitter, KSAM44. Parody is at Parody Now. We're on Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn. Um, if you're a woman athlete, you're looking for resources, um, definitely check us out, sign up. Um, we are here for you guys. Absolutely. And you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at birds the word underscore 24 you can find the podcast on twitter at the number one so one bird's eye view and the podcast of course you can follow us on instagram at birds eye view dot pod once again y'all it's been a blessing you guys have an amazing week it's been another episode of birds eye view carlos Emerson, we're out deuces <laughs>